I would like to introduce another keynote speaker who is extremely talented and knowledgeable and who is here to bust and challenge the status quo of the startup culture in our country. Ladies and gentlemen, this particular gentleman is the founder and CEO of No Broker, a disruptive real estate platform and one of the fastest growing startups in our country today. No Broker has raised $20 million so far, a staggering 3 million Series A from SAIF Partnership and Fulcrum Ventures in January 2015 and KTB Network, and another 17 million Series B round, which was led by BNext and KTB Network, and has participated by SAIF partners, Binos, Qualgrow, and Mamaru in 2016. Nobroker.com is the world's largest C2C real estate platform that is eliminating the brokers and the agents in real estate transactions with a tech-based approach. They have helped owners and the seekers save more than 90% on all of the transactional cost. Before starting No Broker in 2014, this gentleman has worked for companies like CTS, PwC, and Australia New Zealand Bank, and is an alumnus for IIT Kanpur and IIM Ahmedabad. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for none other than Mr. Amit Kumar Agarwal, who is the founder and CEO of No Broker. So we welcome you. Could we have a mic check? Check, check. Uh, so guys, my, I'm Amit Kumar Agrawal. I am the co-founder and CEO of uh, nobroker.com. Uh, my objective in this... So, so guys, I am the co-founder and CEO of nobroker.com and uh, my objective in this short 10-15 minute session is to talk about our journey and more importantly, what are the learnings that we have had in the past uh, so many years, which I believe uh, many of the startup uh, enthusiasts and many of the founders who are here, perhaps it will help them. Uh, so I'm not sure how many of you have heard about nobroker.com, but uh, we are a platform uh, which connects in real estate, which connects owners and sellers, uh, buyers and tenants, sorry, owners and tenants and buyers and sellers directly with each other without any broker in between. And uh, I am an alumnus of, so I'll just tell you about my journey also and how it juxtaposes with the learnings that we have had. So, uh, after IIT Kanpur, I am Ahmedabad, like everybody else, I chased management consulting job and uh, surprisingly, I loved management consulting, so I was there for almost a decade. And then I joined a uh, foreign bank, ANZ Bank. Very, very comfortable job, very well-paying job, great work-life balance. And, but at that point of time, I basically felt that if I continue with this job, my objective would be to now change to another foreign bank, <laughs> look at a higher salary and so on and so forth. And the uh, challenge was missing to that extent. Uh, on the parallel side, since I have had been in consulting, I had shifted to many cities and uh, I had discovered that Indian brokers, a large number of them, real estate brokers, they don't add much value 
and uh, we were surprised as to why is it so that we Indians end up paying such a high amount of brokerage uh, to these brokers who are neither that much educated nor have a license nor take everything in cash and such a high amount of fees they are charging for just connecting two people. And that also in this internet world where I can send a friend request to anybody, <laughs> to every celebrity in the world, they may or may not accept it, but I can. So, uh, so me, my uh, batchmate from I'm Ahmedabad and our junior from IIT, all three of us started thinking that why shouldn't we start something which uh, connects uh, owners and tenants and buyers and sellers directly with each other. Uh, the initial reaction that we got was pretty mixed. I would say more on the side of negative. So many of the founders here who are trying to do something which is very innovative, they can perhaps echo with this. So the biggest challenge that we faced was that people said that it has not been done anywhere else in the world. So nowhere else in the world is there a company which connects both the parties directly in real estate without any broker. Uh, it happens in travel. Well, since travel, there is no longer any travel agent. Uh, in stock broking, you know how the costs have come down. So we said that we don't know what is the reason. But we believe that in this internet world, you should not be paying such a high fees to connect two parties with each other. Uh, when we told this to our friends, our friends basically said that, hey, but why will a consumer pay you in advance? See, what happens in real estate across the world is that first of all, a job gets done and then the payment happens. Nowhere in the world on a platform do a consumer, does a consumer pay first and then expect the job to be done because we are, we, we are not on the street, we are a tech company, we don't have people on the street, so we, need to we would need to take money in advance for getting a deal closed, uh, which was a valid argument. And then when we approached VCs, the biggest question that they ask is that, yeah, this seems like a good idea and we ourselves as consumers don't love brokers, but if it's such a great idea, then why isn't there a US company? Why isn't there a Chinese company which is big? So where is the Amazon and the Uber equivalent of this? We said that we don't know why isn't there a uh, US equivalent. Perhaps uh, in other countries there is more accountability, there are examinations for brokers, there are licenses, but we know about India. Then India, we feel that we are being shortchanged. So I left my <laughs> well-paying job and we basically bootstrapped for a year. And as many of you know, when you leave your job, you get lots of phone calls from your friends congratulating you as to how good you have, good decision you have taken. But slowly the friends disappear into their own lives and you are left alone thinking that, hey, had I gone to office today, I would have earned so much. So that was our journey for the first one year. We approached lots of uh, VCs because real estate is a pretty competitive field and it requires funds. So we, know, we knew that we couldn't bootstrap it all the way. And VCs said, said the same thing, where is US equivalent? And then another large real estate online company uh, basically got funded from SoftBank and then everybody who was still talking to us just vanished overnight because nobody wanted to take the risk of funding another company in real estate. Uh, but on the plus side, our consumers kept on increasing. So my learning in this phase has been that when you are trying to do something new, which most probably as a founder you are going to try and do something new, nobody knows the answer. Your friends don't know the answer. VCs also don't know the answer. Only the consumers know the answer. So the best trick is to ask lots and lots of customers. If customers are favoring you, are favoring your solution at the price point that you want, then you are on the right path. That's, that has been our learning. So we continued on our path without funding, also by putting our own money, the number of consumers kept on rising. Uh, and C2C, because the topic is also C2C network, C2C is very, very difficult, right? Because you might get a particular property in Gachiboli on a particular street, and it is of no advantage if the tenant is of some other locality or the buyer is of some other locality. You need to have the buyer or the tenant for the same locality, for the same street, for the same price point, and that also today. So that C2C matchmaking is a very, very micro locality matchmaking, 
which is a very difficult matchmaking to start with. So it takes a longer time. Perhaps this is one, also one of the reasons why nobody else in the world has attempted this. Because C2C is a tougher problem to solve. After a year, we got funded through SAF partners who said, okay, let's take a punt on them. Seems to be uh, nice guys. And uh, after we got a $3 million funding from them, which was around 18 crores at that point of time, we remain to be extremely frugal. So after having 18 crores in the bank, we did not buy an AC in the summer for our office. We took a, we took a simple home uh, instead of a corporate office, and we said, water cooler se kaam jala lete hain, wo bhi bhaade pe. But let's try to save as much money as we can. So we respected money like crazy. Uh, for all the, we, we did not do any TV advertisement, we were, extremely careful in terms of doing more of BTL marketing so that we get consumers at good ROI. Even the ATL marketing that we did, we're extremely focused as to what is the ROI that we are getting. Uh, typical behavior in the inter consumer internet is to quickly expand to more and more cities. We did not expand to more and more cities. We realized that our business is difficult. If I am not able to get you a house in Hyderabad, you don't care a damn whether I am in Meerat or not, or whether I'm Lucknow or not, or whether I am IT or I am or not. What you care is whether my work gets done or not. So we took a contrarian approach, and despite many of the investors telling us otherwise, we remained to be in only two cities, which was Bombay and uh, Bangalore. And we s expanded slowly only when we saw that a customer's problem is getting solved. Only when he is getting a house, or only when he is able to sell his house, did we move to any other city. Uh, in terms of the, what we did not expect was one thing, uh, that one day outside our office, which was basically a home, we saw a huge group of some 50, 60 people. And we thought perhaps there's some religious procession which is going on. But actually they were a group of brokers. <laughs> who wanted to attack the office, break things, scare our employees. And it was just out of the blue. In a city like Bangalore, which is such a startup friendly city, you never expect that. So a huge ruckus followed. They slapped many of our employees. We thankfully had a iron grill drawer, which we closed. And uh, because of which uh, the things did not get escalated further, thankfully. And we basically just sat inside. We called police, police took us founders to the police station, and we suddenly figured out that we are the ones who are sitting in the police jeep, but the brokers are still there. <laughs> and as usual, local brokers are much, much more pally with the police than us, startup founders. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the problem continued. The, the, those group of people used to harm the motorbikes parked outside their office for the employees chase the female employees towards their home when they used to go in the evening. So finally, we had to vacate the office almost on an overnight basis. And even when we were vacating the office, the vehicle which was carrying the stuff was chased by the brokers trying to know what is our next location. So we temporarily split into two offices. We, we, we searched for a new office. And then we found a new office. And even today, we keep our office address as secret. So whatever office address we have on Google is wrong. And <laughs> We try not to be in the eyes of brokers very clearly. Uh, and another thing which happened in Padlal was that the other startup, the real estate startup, got imploded because of the reasons that you are aware. And we thought that now is a chance, because now what we are doing makes sense. There is no other extremely highly funded startup, so we'll get a chance. But the reverse happened. All the VCs in the country suddenly got very scared. They said, boss, kuch to problem hai. Nobody in real estate is able to make money. We have funded so many real estate companies in India. No one is able to make money. There must be some problem in this industry itself. So we are not going to touch this industry. So for the next five years, we, we did not get any additional funds from any Indian investor. And apart from the one who basically funded us in the start, which was SAF Partners, now called as Elevation. But we kept on, so we went to South Korea, we went to Japan, we went to Singapore. We basically got hold of any small investors taking half a million, one million, whatever we could, just to survive. The objective was to basically survive and slowly grow, keep on growing. In terms of revenue, we, we basically initiated our paid plan. So we still have a freemium platform, 
you can check out properties on nobroker.com free of cost but for premium services we charge so just after 5 6 months of opening our office we started the paid plans and our investors were like why are you in such a hurry you have got money in your bank why don't you take some time grow the numbers but we were like revenue is the is the ultimate truth and it is very easy to basically build in india with such a large population it is often easy to build a platform with a lot of customers who are non paying but unless you start asking them to pay you never know whether your startup has a potential or not so we started with some monetization and i can tell you that for indian consumers 0 rupees moving from 0 rupee to 1 rupee is extremely difficult for your service you just need to say now instead of 0 it is 1 very very difficult for customers to pull out their wallet and give you 1 rupee but once you make that change once consumers start giving you 1 rupee surprisingly 1 rupee to 1000 rupees a comparatively very easy journey once they start trusting you and giving you money then increase the ticket size is surprisingly very very easy which happened with us so another contrarian thing which we did was basically charging starting to play with can we charge how much can we charge and it is this journey is full of learning right because the moment you start charging certainly the customer thinks that he owns you <laughs> indian customer think he owns you and you need to serve him to the best more than what he has paid which is a revelation and which takes some time to learn which we did and along the way what we did another thing which we did was which worked well for us was that we kept on listening and learning from customer so we thought that it's a residential uh, property platform customer told us that no we want commercial not the big buildings like this but small commercial shops so we launched commercial we started with rental customers asked us that can you do buy and sell we did buy and sell then we expanded to packers and movers and painting cleaning and home interiors and insurance and then as we basically started growing and more and more customers started trusting us then the vc world also basically started recognizing us so so two years back we got funded from tiger global from general atlantic and last year we basically became the first uh, prop tech unicorn in the country uh, so the data is wrong here <laughs> and uh, i would say that of course unicorn is something which is being talked a lot about nowadays but the thing that we are most proud of is that today we add from a day 7 8 years back when we had used to add 1000 customers a month today we add 5 to 6 lakh new customers a month our cumulative customer base has crossed 2 crore we are india's largest not only in real estate but we are also india's largest packers and movers aggregator uh, we are in six cities Uh, slightly newer in hyderabad but very excited about it and now in terms of our journey we think that 2 crore abhi kuch bhi nahi kiya hai we look at india's population and we feel everybody needs a house everybody needs to participate in this journey and we have just barely started so uh, so guys my key learning in this journey has been one that always listen to customer because there is always going to be people in vc community among your friends who will either be too polite or will be too harsh so let the consumer decide second is that be frugal no matter how much money you have in your bank whether you are non funded or funded always respect money because uh, it always pays in the long term and it also builds a very very good culture in your company third revenue is super important try to get to revenue as soon as you can even if it is just wetting your feet and fourth don't copy competitors while everybody else in prop tech expanded to 10 cities 20 cities even today after having 2000 crore in the bank today we are only in six cities because we feel that we have not solved the problem for these six cities so we need to conquer these six cities fully then we'll go to a seven city so these have been my uh, our few learnings i hope this has been useful uh, for many of the startup founders who are here uh, thank you so much thank you so much sir Uh, for sharing light on this very important subject of uh, brokers and how they eat up so much of this hard earned money uh, during this entire process of transaction between uh, the seeker and the owner in the real estate business thank you so much for taking out the time and adding this uh, value to t hub phase 2's uh, 
vision of creating a common platform for innovation and entrepreneurship. On that note, I would like to call upon our team from T-Hub to present a memento to Sir. Could I have the team from T-Hub please to present a memento to Mr. Amit Kumar Agarwal who has taken out his valuable time for all of us today. May we have a huge round of applause for Sir. Thank you so much, sir. Samuddin, the founder and CEO of MyMeSD.com. Yes, so uh, my question is how to, you know, keep the trust maintained in your team. Uh, how they should keep supporting you even though you are getting back-to-back -back failures and, you know, having those downs at the beginning. And uh, I have similar, like, into real estate and construction and uh, facing uh, challenges with suppliers in market. So that's my question. So see, uh, in the startup journey, you will continuously face challenges and it doesn't matter whether it was year one or year eight, the same thing holds true for us. But I think what our learning has been to be extremely transparent with our people. Because even for us, when the broker attack happened, people were very worried whether the company will close down. And we had a lot of quick town halls saying that this is, this is what has happened, this is what we are going to do. Because even if you have a two-member team or a 20-member team, the amazing thing is that your teammates are much, much more observant than you think they are. So they can always read your body language, they can understand whether you are worried, whether you are stressed. Our learning has been be extremely transparent with them. Tell them the worries that you are facing, tell them the solution that you propose to attempt. So our learning is that building trust is a longish process. But once trust is built, then your teammates will do anything for your company. Thank you so much for that question. I would still pass on the mic, sir. Thank you very much. That was really insightful. My name is Shalin. I work with a business school here. Uh, you spoke about brokers and how you seem to have disintermediated the brokers and made the connection direct between sellers or buyers or renters. Have you thought of incorporating them into the ecosystem that you have built? Uh, and we have seen many cases where platforms have done that. Traditionally, they have disintermediated, but then brought them back uh, because they, s they have local knowledge. They seem to have some value still to add. So have you thought of integrating them into your network? If yes, how? If no, why? No, no, so it's a, it's a very good question. And philosophically, uh, what we think is that the many of the brokers are amazing. It is not that every broker is bad. And the brokers who are good, who think about the welfare of their clients, nobody can take their business. So no, a platform like no broker can never take the business of well-meaning brokers who care about their client. But the problem is that because majority of the brokers are here for quick money. They don't have license, they take everything in cash. And they do a part-time business, a part-time shop, and they do this also. So they have become more like deal closers who care more about their brokerage rather than benefit of the client. So philosophically, we are OK. We, we, would, we would be happy to work with brokers. But the problem is that we would want to work with them given two conditions. One, the cost should be very low for consumers. So you can't charge one month of brokerage. You have to charge 3,000 rupees, or one-tenth or one-third to the max which brokers are not OK. And second is that the customer focus and customer delight should be centered, not deal closure. Because we think about next two years, five years, 10 years. We are not thinking about some, somebody who's walking in and just will you fleece him, and then you will see about it later. So these are the two things that we are finding it difficult to work with broker. But philosophically, there is no problem working with broker. <laughs> OK. Hi, Amit. Hi. Uh, my city management firm, where we provide like pretty much security, housekeeping, and all maintenance services. So any place where we work with a like, negated community or commercial space, you are one among those vendors where we work along with as well. And I've heard about your journey and your whole firm. Firstly, I want to really appreciate you've actually created this this market, you know, you know, it never existed before. You know, when we compare to the orthodox way of running businesses, so this is a next generation business which you created this platform. So altogether, you know, money is a byproduct of what we do, but we're creating employment, we're creating revenue and generation and all these things. So very inspiring story. So what I want to ask you on this, uh, on a specific note is, 
is is something you know no broker missing out on uh, the facility management part where we look at you know we're growing now so i started off with just a security services now i have a couple of thousand people working in my firm and i operate in six states so i'm going to go international as well next year so i've already touched 100 crore turnover this year so which is a phenomenal growth considering the pandemic and and what we're doing so i kind of look at all your inspiring stories so is there any way where we could work together you know you know something we could you know kind of you know come into an umbrella where we work together, you know, like a form a similar platform. So because what we really look at is we are homegrown, you know, so this is all about the next startup India is all about, we're homegrown. So we are, we are next to none now. So is there anywhere where we could work together in terms of facility management? You know, that is one aspect which no broker has never touched. Sure. So, yeah. It's a very, very tough Toughest field. Toughest job, you know it's that. extremely yeah. tough job. Yeah. We are much more focused on the jobs which are, which has a much bigger tech angle towards it because that has been our DNA. Uh, we have a branch of business which is called No Broker Hood, in which what we do is it's basically competes with apartment done Apna complex where we give visitor management and the ma society maintenance and you provide BMS for them all facility yeah. For, yeah. Uh, for societies. So we are around, we are in 10,000 plus societies across More the country. More than that I would say. And we are in a lot of societies in Hyderabad also. Yeah. So we'll be very happy to work with you as facility management tie up yeah. In the no brokerhood business part. Absolutely. You know, so I could see, you know, there's a bigger platform, you know, where we could kind of build an interface and, you know, we could add this wing to, you know, and also, sure. so post this, we could actually, you know, sure. meet up on this. But pleasure. Good, great story. Yeah. And, you know, proud, you know, we are creating this market, you know, all together. Thank you so much. Thanks. Even I know it's not uh, avoidable. If it happens, how do you take care of those kind of customers? No, it's a very good question. And you should write to me. I am at Amit at nobroker.com, so please ask your friend to write to me directly. See, even if one customer basically has a bad experience, that is bad for us. True. Although on a, it's easy for us to sit in IAC office and look at the numbers and say that, hey, we do so many lakhs of movements per year, and hence, even if one percentage of those movements get bad, then there are so many thousands of uh, uh, unfortunate cases. Uh, but having said that, I think Packer and mover is a tough category because the vendors have a lot of temporary staff which mm -hmm. they hire in the morning and because they can't afford a lot of permanent staff per month. What we are doing very actively is training these packers and movers. So our acceptance rate in the packer and mover vendors is 7%. So we reject 93%. And based upon the feedback that people give us, and we take feedback from everyone, we keep on hiring and firing and giving more business and less business to these vendors so that they are prompted to give amazing customer service. Many of these vendors are not habitual mm -hmm. of thinking in terms of customer delight. Right. So the journey is also about, about teaching them that the only thing which matters is customer delight. If customer is not happy, if your friend is not happy, why will he ever order with no broker again? And in fact, this will also harm the other parts of our business. So each customer case is super important for us. Mm -hmm. uh, but I acknowledge that Indian in India, giving service, physical service, like picking up goods, is a tough business to be in. Uh, but nevertheless, the objective that somebody chooses no broker is that he should have an amazing experience. So that's what, like, yeah. now the thing has been gone wrong. What he can do to make sure at least the kind of loss he has bear. So that I will take care of you. <laughs> Ask him to just email <laughs> right. me. I'll Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for that question. Yes. You have inbuilt of uh, many services like painting and uh, dispatch service and all. What are the services that we can expect in coming future, sir? Uh, so great to hear that you have been able to save a couple of lakhs of brokerage uh, because of us. Uh, so I think what we offer is what customers ask us. So customer asks us that can you give all this non-brokerage is fine, but rental agreement con karega? And we're like, rental agreement isn't that very easy process. But customers said, no, we want help in rental agreement. And similarly with legal documentation. So now we have a wing which basically provides this. Similarly, people felt that in packers and movers, the entire industry is extremely fragmented. And same thing is true with paint, painting. And hence, we are providing that. Anything which consumers ask us, we basically follow. So that way, we are extremely shameless. Uh, we don't innovate on that front. We just listen to consumers. Sir, after going with the rental agreement also, a lot more conflicts will be happen in between uh, in terms of everything. So will that service also be included? Because it's not just having an agreement, two signs of uh, both the parties, right. it's not the easy thing. So then after the actual thing, the analysis comes up, everything comes up in between. Yeah. No, no, of course. So that's a journey which we are undertaking. Thank you, sir.
hiring. Uh, my question is that uh, there are many real estate portals now. Uh, it's existing. Obviously, no broker is leading one of them. My question is that even after having these many real estate portals and they're really solving some of the great problems in real estate, why do you think there are still brokers who are still now closing the deals in buying and selling and renting? Because this has been the traditional way of doing business. So everybody, my parents and me, before no broker, we always used to use broker. So there are two aspects. One is that are we adding more value to a compared to a broker? We think we are. So we need to grow a lot. And it's a good news that uh, there's a lot of space to grow, right? So that, that's a good news. Our market share in these cities will be what, 10%? We'll be higher in Bangalore, we'll be around 20% market share in Bangalore, but in Hyderabad will be what, three, four percentage. So one is there's a great opportunity to, to grow. And second is that it's a habit. And we need to prove that you can save money, you can uh, close a deal faster using no broker. So for example, nowadays, what I am seeing on the platform is now at the post COVID, when people are shifting back from their hometown to the metro cities, deals are getting closed in six hours. It's difficult for a property to be available on no broker for two continuous days. It's going out on the same day. So unless you make a visit the same day, the property is going out. So the interaction on the platform are amazingly well. We doubled the interactions in this summer. Hopefully we are going to grow more. But having said that, there will always be a 20, 30 percentage market for the brokers who are good brokers. So no broker will never have 100% market because the good brokers are going to have some market and they should have some market. Thank you for and thanks for taking my job away. <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur now. Thanks for that inspiring story. Now, there is a serious thing, not finding an apartment or villa is you can actually ask your beside person or a job person to find a flat. How about you answer finding an agricultural land in entire India, which is the deepest thing to find without a broker. Now, I believe 135 crores of population, if at all I count now, it could be 140 in another one year. How are you going to solve with 2% of land in entire India and 140 crores bellies to feed with safe soil movements going on and the entire 100% of brokers are, you know, manipulating or doing whatever business on agricultural lands? Is there a chance that nobroker.com going into agricultural lands and fixing a solution? Second thing, Telangana has come up with the digitized uh, land records of uh, agricultural lands and everything through their name. They made uh, 1,000 crores of profits last year, I believe. Now, I think this would be a good chance for you using artificial intelligence and the customers who are, you have already into apartments, villas, trying to turn their heads towards agricultural lands and buy them. So what do you say about that? Thank you. No, it's a good question. And uh, see, we, we don't think that we can solve every problem amazingly well. We also need to try and figure out the way. What we have realized is that plots, agricultural land, is a huge opportunity in India. Uh, so what we have done is we are going to launch it uh, next month, plots and agriculture land. And it's going to be a start. I'm sure it's going to take a lot of time for us to build. But we are committed to learn more. And this is an amazing market because across the country, it's not just properties which people buy. Land is a favorite. Even in, among our employees, land is a favorite. So let's see how th things go. But you. the digitization which has happened across the country is a big aid for us which we hope to leverage. Thank you. Are you ready to partner with any of the already built agricultural land solution or with no broker? Want us to uh, hear uh, anything on that particular solution? No, you can, you can email it to me. Happy to pass. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for that question. Do we have any last questions for sir? All right. Thank you so much, sir, for that valuable time of yours. Amazing interaction with you on this iconic day. A huge round of applause for Mr. Ramit Kumar Agarwal. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall now...